Welcome to the Unnamed Reverse Engineering Podcast. I'm Jen Costillo. With me, as always, is... Alvaro. Mr. <laughs> Thank God we got your name right this time. <laughs> and we have a special guest today, Oleg Kutkov. Welcome. Yes, thank you for having me. And uh, he's he's decided to out-geek us by having a picture of the Enterprise behind him. <laughs> Which no one will be able to see, but I do see it and I appreciate it. It's very impressive. Yeah, there's is also, the you can you? see... Is that a DeLorean? Yeah, yeah, it's a DeLorean. Uh, oh, it's yeah. A time machine, yes. One of us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is this is where I talk about the picture that I have with uh, Christopher Lloyd, me dressed as Jem, and the rest of the family dressed as Star Trek. It was in front of the DeLorean. Where, where was this? <laughs> this was at a Comic-Con. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very confusing picture. <laughs> I, I also met, met him uh, at, at Comic Con in Kiev. He it was oh. two years ago. Yeah, so I have I have a photo with him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very nice, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Much tinier than I imagined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a very thin man. <laughs> so yeah, here here we are. Oh, ah, yeah, you're showing yeah. Showing us a photo. This is this is so cool. Yeah, it's also amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's not why we're here. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> Show each other pictures. I'm sure this is very interesting to the audience who could totally see all these pictures. I mean, we can put stuff on show notes if you want. That's totally fine. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I guess we're we're here to talk about reverse engineering, but but before we get to that, you mentioned you're in Kiev right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so if I, I I would be amazed if people haven't heard of what's happening right now, but we can talk about it. <laughs> like, can you, especially this morning? Yeah, this tell evening? us what, what what's going on. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, it's quiet now. <laughs> so yeah, that's great because uh, we had to woke up uh, at five a.m. today because of explosion. It was uh, really loud. It was. Uh, I don't know where it was, but yeah, it was loud. So we had to wake up to check that everything okay, that we are all right and uh, hide. So yeah, it happens sometimes here. Thanks. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite nervous <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, and, and I, I guess do you all have shelters in your building or how does it, how does it work? Uh, yeah, we have uh, two types of shelters. We have a basement uh, just uh, for the worst case scenario. And also, typically, we are hiding uh, in our apartment, just in the deepest point of our apartment, where there's no windows, where the wall is strongest. So, yeah. We're just sitting here and waiting for the news, uh, listening what's going on outside. So, yeah, typically 10 minutes. So, yeah. And and I guess, I mean, we're, we're talking over video real time right now, so, so I'm guessing connectivity is pretty good. You're able to communicate, get all the information you need? Uh, yes, our primary communication channel is still intact. Uh, there was uh, one interruption two weeks ago, but it was quickly fixed. And yeah, no disconnection signs. So yeah. Is it is it because it's not terrestrial or is it everything terrestrial? and? Everything is terrestrial, but the, everything is quickly fixed. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> and and I guess this is something I want to ask you. Uh, you know, as we're we're outsiders, right? Well, Jen and I right now in the U.S. Do you know what people like us can do to help, uh, other than kind of spread awareness? And I mean, I guess we could talk to our government people if they would even listen. But I, I don't know what uh, you would suggest or things we can do to help, if anything. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't, I don't know because. Uh, only one thing our government and our country is asking is for clothes in the sky. Mm -hmm. But uh, NATO refuses to do that. They are af afraid. 
of Russia. Yeah, because uh, rocket strikes and air strikes is the only problem. Because we are actually we are good on the ground. We are beating all of them, but uh, yeah, they are constantly launching rockets to our cities from the Russian and from Belarusian territory also. So yeah, this is a big problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we don't have enough uh, jets to fight all the rockets. So yeah, and you don't have an Israeli-style Iron Dome. That yeah. I don't think that's something you can deploy overnight. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So 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 we need to try to get your uh, uh, close guys. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's all we are begging here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and and. and... Yeah, no, I, th- th- this is the first time in the, the, something like this happening <laughs> in my lifetime, I guess. Um, sure. So this, is, this has been uh, crazy, yeah. I, I mean, I can't even imagine what it is to, to be there right now, but, but just from here, it's, 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 I, I can't, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, so I also never imagined that I will end up uh, in the situation like this. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh. <laughs> but <laughs> segue. you know we we could yes let, let's segue just to, to to stuff to distract ourselves for a little bit well i mean it, this is something i mean i follow you on twitter and throughout all this stuff you've still been working on your projects amazingly yeah you're still making posts <laughs> yeah yeah because it's help uh, helps me to keep calm uh to to, to yeah yeah to not go crazy because it's to really important. Normal, maybe? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some sense of normality. Yeah, and 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 I should say what, the, the the reason I reached out, the reason I've been following you most recently is some of your SpaceX like Starlink modem reverse mm-hmm. engineering, which I guess could be very useful uh, in, in the situation right now. Sure, sure. Uh, currently, my Starlink terminal it's uh, just a backup solution for me, in, just in case of mm-hmm. any in the interruption of the internet connectivity. But you got a hold of it well before all of this happened, right? You've been working on this. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I bought it two months ago on eBay just for the research purposes. I never saw that I will use it for the internet connectivity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a happy coincidence, right? You were probably the first person in the country to get it working. Um, yeah, I think I was the first civilian person, civilian user of starting here in Ukraine. That's pretty cool. So... Why? Why Starlink? I think I feel like we've jumped. We've just <laughs> we <laughs> dove in really quickly. So well, that that's fine. But you know, why Starlink? Why why target that one? Because there's certainly other satellites. Yeah, uh, actually, I think that this, this this technology is quite amazing. Uh, I'm interested in all satellites and all satellites communication, radio equipment, and so on, so on. Uh, but yeah, Starlink. It, something really new because uh, it's a phased array antenna type uh, of the communication and uh, previously uh, such type of antennas was available only I don't know for militaries uh, for aviation space industry and so so on and now actually everyone is able to buy uh, something like this and mm-hmm. it's yeah it's quite amazing how technology just jump it and could, you you just said phase array uh, antennas. Right? Uh, yeah, uh, if you think about typical antenna, it's something that radiates the radio signal in any direction or in some uh, direction uh, for the receiver or for the transmitter. But uh, phase array antenna, it's array of multiple antennas, multiple small antennas that uh, works in the same time. But uh, this uh, array allows to precisely steer the radio beam. So we can uh, send the radio waves exactly in the same point. Is a, so, so, yeah, so we can steer the beam uh, electronically okay. Without, okay, so... without, without rotating the antenna. Oh, cool. Okay, okay. So, so it, allows, it allows you to create a more directed beam by summing all those antennas yes. together yes. based on their power and then does it, so it's not doing like a coexistence type thing where there's like separate ones that are on and off and on and off um like maybe Bluetooth uh, yes, and Wi-Fi yes. typically so if you think about uh, typical classic uh, classic uh, satellite antenna uh, 
yes, you can create a very directive beam, but if you need to change this direction, you need to rotate the whole antenna. You need to use motors uh, and so on. But with this face array antenna, you, and your antenna is uh, just standing and the beam is uh, targeting electronically. Yeah, electronically steerable is yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. So. You, you don't need to move that whole dish to point at the sky wherever. I guess, yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's good, yeah. So yeah, it's amazing technology and it's uh, it's really nice that we, we now have it. So <laughs> at our homes. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Well you bought it on and you bought it on eBay, so yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can you can get them on eBay. That that's how you know it's wait, wait, it's wait. everywhere. But it, but I mean wait 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 wait. But the, okay, is it it's only the satellite that has that, right? Not the dish. No the right? dish. <laughs> oh no, the dish. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yes. Then yes, you can have it at your home. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I guess <laughs> before we dive into all the Starlink stuff, uh, we haven't asked you about yourself. Like, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> we know where you are. Manners. But, uh, what? <laughs> uh, sure. Sure. I'm uh, embedded engineer uh, working in uh, telecommunication. Uh, embedded engineer means that I am working somewhere in the middle of the hardware and software. So, so yeah, I can uh, write uh, software, some drivers, some firmwares, and so on. And also, I can uh, make and hack a hardware. Nice. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, on the most low level. <laughs> and, and, you know, how, how did you get into reverse engineering? Because, you know, as an embedded engineer, you're making stuff, but, but also I, I should point people to your fantastic blog. You have a really really good write-ups and all sorts of topics, but how did you end up in the reverse engineering area? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I started uh, my, I don't know, electronic, electronic path somewhere when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was four or three years old. Uh, so yeah, I just started to collect in uh, some piece of equipment, some hardware, some old PCBs, so yeah, it's I was really interested in all of this, and then I started to read uh, old books about electronics, and then I started to build build my first uh, devices like uh, radio receivers, uh, some amplifiers, microphones, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't have a computer at that time, uh, so. I, I wish I had, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's an unusual statement <laughs> for a lot of a lot of reverse. Yeah, computers. my first I got my first computer uh, in two thousand five. Yeah, uh, I built I built my first computer in two thousand five. I just bought CPU, motherboard, uh, disk, uh, and so on uh, on the market, and yeah, <laughs> and built uh, built my first computer. Wow. And now, okay, this is this is one question I have. When you were putting it together, were you nervous as you were inserting things <laughs> in? Because I know there's some people are very confidently used to that crunch that you have on some of the, the like, sockets you put in the sodims. Yeah, and other people are just like very delicate, <laughs> and uh, it doesn't go in. <laughs> yes, I was I was a confident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I read too many books uh, and magazines about computers, uh, so yeah, it, I know what to, the yeah yeah I know what to expect <laughs> and how to not break the stuff. Plus, uh, plus all my uh, all my electronic experience helped me. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Did you actually ground yourself? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah. Then I just started to learn everything. I. Actually, I tried everything, uh, software development, 3D graphics, uh, video editing, uh, I don't know, everything. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then I decided that uh, software development is the uh, most interesting to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, uh, I thought, yeah, that's, this is what I uh, just want to do. I have a side question, though. So if I... I, it, at some point on your website, there is a discussion of like astrophysics. Is that what yeah. you agree? On? So, <laughs> how do you? 
How do you go from software, I build a bunch of computers, I love electronics, to astrophysics? I know this is maybe an awkward question. Uh, yeah, I uh, always was a fan of the space of astrophysics. Uh, you know, talking about uh, Doc Brown from Back to the Future. I am uh, this kind of person, so I tried to study all the sciences <laughs> when, I was, when I was a kid. So, yeah, I tried uh, electronics, I tried uh, astrophysics, uh, chemistry, uh, physics, <laughs> and so mm -hmm. on. So, yeah, I just read a lot of books uh, about everything. Uh, so, yeah, but space, uh, yeah, I am... I'm a big fan of space, uh, space exploration, and so on. I maybe I watch all the science fiction movies, <laughs> yeah. And, and now, yeah, now I when I watching all the streams uh, from SpaceX uh, Starship <laughs> launches, yeah, it's like just like a science fiction became reality, and this mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite sci-fi film then? Uh, yes, it's a uh, Contact. Oh yes, it's uh, a good one. Yeah, yeah, by Carl Sagan. Yeah, I think is uh, the I don't know most accurate, most uh, most scientific movie yeah. of all the time. Yeah, it was kind of boring. Yes, and slow. <laughs> That's how I found it. I like <laughs> it. But, yeah. but 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 I take that as the realism of hey, sometimes it takes a while. You don't you know. It's yeah, not like, uh... yeah. From from science and from technical point of yeah. view, it's quite amazing. Yeah, movie. they're in Arecibo, right? Yeah, yeah, Arecibo and VLA. Arecibo, uh, yeah. rest in peace. <laughs> As of last so, year, so it was sad. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's see. Where so that explains how you how how we have astrophysics. Has the astrophysics been useful in this time, or is there like a product that you have in mind that you've always wanted to build? based on your interest in sci-fi? Uh, yeah, a few years ago, I lived not in Kyiv, but in Crimea. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is where I was born. Uh, uh -huh. So yeah, and uh, here then in Crimea, I worked a few years in the Astrophysical Observatory. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, nice. yeah, that was really amazing. I work it with real scientists uh, on real telescopes. I also found a few new stars. What? Uh, Did you get to yeah. name them? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they name it, but uh, typically the stars name it uh, randomly. It's like oh, J77. Yeah, J17 plus uh, 18 something. Okay. Not exciting. <laughs> but you discovered stars. That's pretty darn... That's so cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, I created a lot of software and hardware for the astronomy. Actually, I made... I created a software that helps to analyze and calibrate images from the telescopes. Uh, also, I created uh, some piece of hardware, maybe one of the most uh, beautiful hardware that I created at the time, it was an uh, old scale camera. It's a special mm -hmm. box with two cameras and uh, multiple sensors like uh, temperature, humidity, infrared uh, radiation sensor, uh, and so on. Uh, this autonomous box uh, allows astronomers to monitor uh, condition of the sky. Uh, and also it's uh, su make suggestions uh, to should mm -hmm. should they uh, should they close the telescope or should they start observation uh, what what to expect next and so on. I I I did see so you, I'll link to the you have some podcast uh, not podcast uh, blog uh, posts about the the all star uh, all sky camera what's it called yeah yeah all sky camera yes. It's really like the pictures look really neat. Yeah, I have a few posts, and uh, <laughs> there is uh, some interesting thing happened because uh, when I wrote my article about uh, infrared sensor that uh, works in this camera, I it was uh, four years ago, but uh, then when uh, COVID happens, 
I found that uh, my article used in some uh, medical research. Medical? Uh, so, oh, yeah, so. yeah. Some gr- so? some group of scientists uh, used uh, my uh, my schematics and my code to create uh, infrared sensor to monitor human body temperature. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I found this yeah. uh, big uh, science paper. And the reference to my website. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, nice. it was amazing. Wow. So, how, so given that, like, how, you know, obviously somebody utilized it in, in some way, but like, how much would it cost to build something like that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe four. Ignoring the shift. Yeah, four four hundred or maybe five hundred bucks. Oh, that's not bad. U.S. Not yeah. Euro, yeah. Not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's probably assuming that... that there's no chip shortages. Well. And other... <laughs> sure, sure. Actually, <laughs> the heart of the of this camera is just a Raspberry Pi. Oh, nice. Oh. Those are also hard <laughs> <Yeah>. to find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably have one in a drawer. <laughs> cool. So, so you were working on kind of uh, astronomy stuff, and then I did see some projects also in your blog, more radio astronomy related, right? Like uh, using antennas to. Modern. Uh, yes. Yeah. What is radio astronomy <laughs> for uh, yeah. me as well as the audience? Uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, actually we talked about uh, contact movie, mm-hmm. and th- this movie is all about radio astronomy. So okay. yeah, yeah, everyone knows about classical astronomy. It's when the telescope uh, making some pictures of the sky, but uh, they the telescope working in visible light. Mm-hmm. But visible light is only part of the electromagnetic radiation. Yeah. So there's X ray, gamma radiation, radio waves, and uh, all objects in the universe producing all kinds of waves. So not it's not only light, but also it's X ray radiation, uh, it's uh, radio waves, uh, basically. Mm-hmm. Every frequency. So, yeah, it's quite important to observe those objects in radio waves because mm-hmm. there are some interesting uh, situation may happen. Uh, some other objects might be invisible due to dust, uh, dust, uh, yeah, due to dust in the, in the space. And this dust uh, just blocks the light, visible light. But radio waves could pass through this uh, dust. So, yeah, we can see this object in a radio wave. And we can uh, learn something new about this object. That's cool. Yes, and uh, I had a big dish <laughs> <laughs> in the observatory. Yeah, I worked on my uh, radio telescope project. I created some equipment, amplifiers, some software. But uh, yeah, I had to abandon all this hardware in Crimea when I moved to Kiev. From the last <laughs> invasion. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm shaking my head here. Cause stop bum- stop bumming us it. out. Yeah. So is the, you know, it, it sounds like you were using like the, the dishes that were available to you in the lab at Crimea. So like, sounds like I wouldn't be able to build something at home to be able to do much. Would that be accurate, or can I totally make my own dish and like grab a Raspberry Pi and? Uh, yes, get you can. Y- yes, you can. Uh, actually, you can use uh, quite cheap uh, TV satellite dish for mm-hmm. basic uh, for basic radiation observation. So yeah, it's yeah. possible. Okay, okay, because I see them lying all over people's houses, and I don't think anyone is using them anymore. For for TV. Yeah, I don't think so. Like, I, some people have like four or five of them. Like, I don't know why they keep bolting them on. They couldn't all be using all of them. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a, a thing in the U.S. that people have way too many of these things. But uh, the, the same story here in Ukraine. Oh yeah, we also have a <laughs> plenty of dishes on every house. Yeah. So, so what kind of signals would you listen to uh, from a like non-work perspective, like from from a hobbyist perspective? Uh, you mean you mean you mean radio astronomy or yeah yeah everything? let's say you set up your own dish like what were you listening to were you listening to kind of far out space stuff or were you trying to listen on satellites what what's kind of what what's more interesting to you I guess yeah oh I think both <laughs> but you know uh, when you're talking about radio astronomy and uh, listening 
it might be quite boring because all you're receiving is just a noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> just a noise, but uh, there might be some patterns uh, in this noise. So, yeah, uh, astronomers could find something interesting, some uh, some frequency pat- patterns, some uh, polarization, and so on. Can you give us an example of what what would be a, a an appreciable or an interesting uh, frequency pattern or signal, to yeah. listen for? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm so can. sorry to put you on the spot here because this is probably not you you were expecting to talk about. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's okay. Actually, you can uh, listen to the sun. So if you point your dish to the sun, uh, you will receive okay. Uh, okay. A, a lot of noise. But yeah. uh, you can find uh, a correlation between a sun activity and uh, this noise. So yeah, mm-hmm. when the sun is most active, uh, you can find uh, that that there are more noise coming from the sun. So yeah. So so like when there's a big solar flare storm happening, you're just gonna hear like a, a more more noise or an increase yeah. in the noise. Uh, yeah, more? yeah, okay. that, that's correct. Hmm. Also, you can listen to Jupiter. What? Uh, oh. Jupiter, yeah, yeah, Jupiter creates a lot of. Uh, <laughs> A lot of uh, radio waves, uh, and uh, actually those waves might be sometimes quite, uh, I don't know, melodical. That's really... I... How so? Like... Yeah, yeah, you can try to find uh, uh, NASA recordings of the Jupiter. Uh, so yeah, and listen, it's quite amazing. I'll, I'll have it's to just, find some, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just a random noise, that, uh, but this noise might create uh, something, I don't know, beautiful. It really sounds like something out of space, something like Literally. alien-like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like from the old science fiction, those kinds of sounds. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I just read through the Expanse. <laughs> like a theremin sound. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what you're suggesting. I just read the Expanse series, and, and one of those uh, things is listening to these you know, asteroids. You know, that happens to have some alien thing on it, but, but people are listening to the radio. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, but if you go back to the satellites, it uh, might be more interesting because uh, you can receive uh, data from the uh, meteorological satellites, so you can actually get mm-hmm. image from the satellite of your area. Mm-hmm. Are these the the ghosts or which satellites are these? Like the the weather ones. Uh, yeah, well, weather one. Uh, it's Goas. It's N E N O A A satellites. Yeah, NOAA. Yeah, uh, yeah NOAA satellites. Uh, and typically, all the data streams are unencrypted, so everyone uh, can receive and analyze this data. And is it uh, is it an open like a standard protocol, or do people reverse engineer it? Uh, it's open. Oh, cool. It's open and uh, defined, so you can find a plenty of documentation, uh, plenty of software just for the decode. The universal satellite decoders, so you can just record your signal, put the signal into the software, and then get your image or some text messages or whatever it is. What, what kind of tool would you be using for recording of the signal? Because you have the dish, but you need an actual receiver, right? Uh, yeah, you need an SDR, Software Defined Radio. It's a co- quite cool device. You can bought it really cheap. I don't know, maybe it starts from five US dollars <laughs> up to yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know what? That's a perfect segue for the next ones that we're planning on. By the way, yeah, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> Yep, five dollars is definitely an entry point. This is the RTL yeah. SDR, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, RTL yeah. SDR. Yeah, so you can receive almost anything. You can receive a signal from satellites. You can receive a signal from airplanes, uh, yep. and so on. ADSB. Yeah. So, so what you're saying? Okay, so let's see. In my mind, okay, I have, I have a Raspberry Pi connected to a a dish or some With other an SDR, software yeah. defined radio. Yep. 
And then I'm like checking out the weather and I'm figuring out what planes are flying overhead where I am. And I just beam that to like a, an Android app that goes to my watch. And I'm just like, Psh, I don't need your weather you can, app. I have my own. You still have to interpret it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that, <laughs> sure, sure. That's true. But I just uh, make it in colors and, and, and blobs. That's all yeah, I need. Yeah, but uh, that's not fun. <laughs> I it's, didn't say it was fun. I'm just saying I could do it and then point to it and then talk about how much better this is than, you know, <laughs> the weather channel the default app. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not better. <laughs> you can't get any better results, but, uh, but yeah. But uh, when you know that uh, it's uh, your rock, it's, uh, it's your getting this information. That's pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah it's pretty cool. And so I, I guess also jumping ahead a little bit, one of the other posts I wanted to talk about that, that you have is the HackerF supercluster. Yeah. <laughs> so HackerF oh, is, yeah. is another software-defined radio by Gray Scott Gadgets. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us like yeah. why and how and how's that going? <laughs> yeah. How, when, where, and why, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, it's a really crazy project <laughs> for me. Uh, okay, so what is it? Starting with just what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, when we are talking about SDRs, there are some limitations. Uh, the most important limitation is the bandwidth. It's the bandwidth limits uh, how many signal you can receive at the same time. So basically, FTR SDR is able to receive uh, I don't know maybe one or two megahertz of the data at the mm -hmm. same time. Uh, there are uh, different receivers, so like HackerF, it's uh, quite expensive. It's, uh, I don't know, 100 bucks right now. And this device uh, gives you up to 20 megahertz of the bandwidth. Uh, that's great, but uh, it might be not enough for something like uh, weather satellites. Oh, really? Really cool, yeah. Uh, there are different uh, uh, types of weather satellites. Uh, some of them produces uh, really a lot of the data, so you need an uh, uh, expensive receiver to work with this data. And then at some point I decide uh, what will happen if I try to combine multiple <laughs> SDR receiver to a single one. So yeah. I bought uh, eight uh, hacker of boards uh, as error splitter to split this uh, incoming signal between all these boards. Uh -huh. And then, then I started to experiment in. Uh, actually, <laughs> now I can tell that uh, I learned a lot of new stuff. I found a lot of issues. issues. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, the most uh, typical problem is uh, synchronization between all these boards. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, all the receiver should work as uh, one receiver. So yeah, they should receive uh, the same signal at uh, the same uh, the same time. So you need uh, something to synchronize all these boards. Uh, so yeah, uh, when I found this. <laughs> Uh, so I created uh, a special device. Uh, it's a clock amplifier. Uh, that, yeah, that receives uh, clocking signal from the GPS receiver, uh, and then uh, distributes uh, the signal between all the SDR boards without uh, any delays and uh, phase inaccuracy. So yeah, it's uh, really important to keep all the signal. Signals in phase. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is the the pulse per second from the GPS receiver, right? Or, or do, do you make that into a clock? Uh, there are two signals: uh, one PPS, one pulse per second, uh, plus uh, ten megahertz uh, signal for clocking the board. Oh, cool! And the the HackerF has a feature to to have a an external clock. Then, I guess. Uh, yes. Uh, but uh, there were no software support uh, when I started it, so I had to patch yeah. the, the software, hacker software a little bit uh, to be able to use this feature. And uh, what were you able to listen to with the with the 
the cluster. Uh, yeah, I try to receive uh, or at least monitor uh, signal from the TV satellites, uh, DV, DVBS and DVBS2 mm -hmm. uh, broadcasts. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I got the signal, uh, the the whole bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that, but yeah, but then I found that I still is not, uh, unable to demodulate the code the signal, and then I learned about phase noise of the SDR. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. I am clocking and synchronizing all the boards, but uh, the circuit of the SDR still has some imperfections. So yeah, and these imperfections create a lot of troubles. So yeah, I uh, my next project is to find uh, a solution for this problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, we yeah. We're going to talk to some of the folks who make this uh, soon, so so we'll, we'll we'll be sure to ask, like, how can we fix this phase noise the, issue? Like very, very very angrily. What about this phase noise, <laughs> Jen? You don't know what the hell you're talking about. That's true, but what about the phase noise? So I'm looking at some of the pictures that you have, like for this this cluster, and it's like you have two, I, I like is this antenna arrays like zip tied together? This PD one one four zero like zip tied together. Because they look rather heavy. <laughs> uh, could... Yeah, <laughs> what I can see in the picture is eight uh, SDR boards, yeah. uh, signal splitter, uh, plus uh, my clock distribution amplifier. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, that's that's that blue box behind it, or black yeah. box behind it. Mm -hmm. Gray box. It's gray box. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'll, we'll link. To the I can't show even notes. explain. Like, just like jury rig, like you know, and t like module to like VNC connector to VNC connector to VNC connector. Uh, oh <laughs> yeah, <antenna>. yeah. <laughs> from, from the antenna side, there are uh, amplifiers and mm -hmm, filters. Yep. So, yeah, uh, because yeah. Uh, splitter creates uh, a lot of attenuation of the signal. So yeah, I had to amplify the incoming signal. So. So this doesn't help you receive a signal that's kind of crossing uh, across the, the the different bands, right? But but if if you wanted to listen to, for example, eight individual signals, but at the same time, this would already work. Like you could measure if it's if it's a some other thing that's maybe frequency hopping, and you just lock in on those four, this would still work, right? Yes, yes, it's possible. And actually, this uh, helps me to just to know that there is a signal. Yeah, <laughs> there is something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and then you can tune to that signal. I guess as long as it's not wider than a single rate, a single SDR's bandwidth. Is that I guess the limitation? Mm, yes, that's really cool. And uh, did you have a project in mind? So mostly it was just listening to these bigger the satellites that are transmitting really wide bands. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, the main goal of this project it was a starring. Oh, so, yeah, we're yeah, perfect. <laughs> this is a perfect segue. Yeah, when I when I first heard about starring, I thought, oh, yeah, it's a quite amazing technology. Uh, and then I thought maybe I can try to receive uh, to monitor the signal to to discover what satellite is actually transmitting. Yeah, but because they uh, they might transmit something. Yeah, this is before we anyone had uh, terminals, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, even before before I had my my terminal, uh, so yeah, I started to collect in information. I get a lot of PDFs, a lot of articles all about Starling. I I read all patents about <laughs> Starling, and got a lot of information about frequencies, about uh, satellites. <laughs> antennas uh, and so on and actually i got some results uh, i received something that we called starring beacons mm -hmm. uh, you can find a lot of articles about this actually uh, the signals are very narrow band it's uh, just a few mm -hmm. kilohertz oh, wow. <laughs> but but yeah it's uh, definitely starting because uh, the signals are moving they are coming from the area of the sky where actually starring satellites flying right, right now. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, plus there is a Doppler sh- Doppler shift of the signal. Yeah, so, which is expected. Yeah. Yeah, and all of this correlates correlates with the sharing. Yeah, so, yeah, and I should mention, I guess, for for folks who don't know, but you know, there's public information about where every piece of space thing is, right? Like you can just download the the files that tell you where all the satellites are supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. including the garbage, but or the just the active satellites. Uh, active and uh, some of the dead satellites. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, TLE files, right? I think it's what it yeah, yeah, T- TLE files. Uh, actually, you can uh, download uh, those files from uh, NORAD. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they sharing all the information <laughs> about this. So uh, yeah, there are a lot of software that helps you to visualize uh, all the satellites, so you will know what's flying above you right now. And um, were were you able to decode the the beacons or or is it just no like do we not know what they're actually sending? Actually, there is no any data. It's just uh, some ton. Oh, it's um, a literal beacon. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, maybe the signal was used for ground stations. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Got some reference stone. Oh, cool. And and is it the same for all the satellites, or is each unique? Uh, the same, the same. Okay. Okay. There are some difference in frequencies, uh, mostly due to Doppler shift, yeah. but yeah, they are all the same. But is the Doppler shift strictly be based on location of it in the in the sky relative to where you are? Uh, it's uh, relative to actual f- movement of the satellites. Okay. Because uh, yeah, when object is moving, the frequency might be shortened or yeah, or extended. So you will receive uh, receive the signal on a lower or on a higher frequency than real frequency. So yeah, uh, when you're receiving those uh, beacons, you can see these funny pictures when uh, the signal is starting start appearing on the one side of the bandwidth and then it just moving, 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 moving <laughs> to yeah. the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and then you can see another one and sometimes they are crossing. Oh. And, yeah, creating yeah, funny there's patterns. there's different uh, rings, I guess, right, of satellites. Okay. Yeah. Different orbits. And okay. yeah. is this signal strong enough that you can pick up with an omnidirectional antenna or do you need a, a dish pointing in the right place? Actually, you don't even need a dish. You can use just uh, a part of the dish, uh, something that's called low noise block or LNB. It's mm-hmm. a receiver that sits in the focal point of the dish. So yeah, you can just uh, take it and put it to the sky, to the horizon, to the, yeah, to the, to the sky, and just wait. And then and you'll know it. when when it's there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Sure. So okay, so so you had your 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 Hackraft cluster. You wanted to listen to to um, Starlink satellites. Then you were able to get the beacon, but you weren't. You can't decode the the wider data because of you know the the, the face noise issues. So then, what was the next step to go? Like, oh, I'm just gonna get a dish and take it apart. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, when I discovered that I can buy this this device on eBay. I just uh, started hunting because, <laughs> yeah, uh, it looks like a lot of people trying to buy <laughs> this device at the same time. I don't mm-hmm. know why, but yeah, finally I got my terminal. I brought it to the Ukraine and then I just disassembled it completely to see what's inside to discover how it works. Uh, actually, uh, starting terminals, <laughs> terminal uh, contains of two devices. It's actually Dishi outdoor unit, mm-hmm. plus a Wi-Fi router that sits in your home. And uh, I decided to start from the router because it's uh, simpler and uh, because I am working in a telecommunication industry, in a Wi-Fi industry, so yeah. I found uh, that the actual chipset of this router is something that I really know. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, there are no surprises, and I wrote. A really big and interesting article mm-hmm. about reverse engineering of the starting product. It's a quite popular article. Yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're going to link to it, of course. And yeah, then I started with my Dishi. It's, uh, I uh, must admit, it's quite complex device and it's uh, well protected. So yeah, uh, they did uh, a really good job with uh, security. Can you elaborate a little bit on what do you mean by well protected? Uh, sure, it uh, was hard to dump the firmware from the dish uh, when uh, because uh, you know it's a very interesting situation. Uh, I could not remove the memory chip from the board because uh, yeah, it's a BGA type of the chip when uh-huh. the, all the pins under the cheap right uh, so yeah uh, and this board is uh, really huge it's a huge uh, board it's a huge heat sink isn't it uh, yeah yeah huge <laughs> sink, heat sink so yeah so heating it up to get it off is uh, yeah <laughs> but th- then i found the test points of the on the board nice. uh, so yeah that correlates to the memory chip uh, but then i tried to power up uh, the chip without the whole dish uh, just to read the data from the memory chip but it appears that uh, CPU also starts when I try to power up uh, the, the memory chip. Yeah. So yeah, uh, there is a conflict when uh, my <laughs> when I'm trying to read the data from the memory chip, the DC CPU also tries to read the data <laughs> at the same yeah. time. Just just a little bit of a conflict. <laughs> so yeah, then I found a solution just to cut off the CPU from the memory chip. And for up everything, then I got the data, and then I found that data is stored in quite unusual format. Mm. So yeah, I had to wrote a special software to decode uh, this uh, data. How did you figure out the format was? Oh, <laughs> uh, thankfully to the open source. Uh, because uh, SpaceX uh, uses Linux uh, and mm-hmm. U-Boot software, and according to the GPL uh, license, they must uh, publish all the information. Nice. So yeah, yeah, I just found the code on the GitHub on SpaceX GitHub. Uh, yeah, but actually they hide uh, this code a little bit. It uh, was under deleted branch. Oh. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But I found <laughs> this branch, and got the cut, and then I found uh, what is the data, what is the format of the data. Yeah. Wait, wait. They put it, they put it in a branch that was called that was deleted, or they called something deleted branch <laughs> that was actually published. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, sorry. It was in a single single commit that was in a hidden branch. Yeah. So ah, it's, okay. yeah. Sneaky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know if that if that would uh, if that would be called published uh, for for GPL uh, reasons, right? Uh, yeah. Technically, they uh, published the data, but yeah, it's not <laughs> easy to find this data. Yeah, but I found. Uh, so yeah, uh, and finally, I got the file system. I got the kernel of the dish, and uh, then I found that. Uh, SpaceX uh, basically use the same code for the DC, for the satellites, and even for the rockets. What? Are the rockets too? Uh, so yeah. Are you, are you going to go on eBay and get a rocket too? Or... <laughs> That's... So, so... <laughs> Dying to know the freight charge on that one. <laughs> uh, no, no. There are some uh, basic uh, code uh, that uh, supports the SpaceX environment. So basically, when the DC boots, uh, first, it's a Linux Linux kernel starts, and then a kernel starts the environment. Uh, on a, on a on a typical desktop Linux system, it's uh, in its system that starts all the services, all the software, and so on. But SpaceX uh, creates created their own in its system uh, that called uh, SpaceX Launcher instead of System D. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead of system D, yeah, it's something similar, but yeah. Star D. 
<laughs> well, SpaceX launcher is pretty like funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, and then this launcher starts the actual environment, and this environment actually depends on the product. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I found a script that tries to find what time type of the product it is. So yeah, they're just uh, if if uh, uh, the, the script then if this is a rocket then do this thing, mm-hmm. if this is a satellite then do the next thing and so on. <laughs> so you're kind of getting two two hacks in for for one product basically. You get you get you get the yeah. If you ever get a hold of a rocket. Get the rocket, like this. This is pretty economical. <laughs> if yeah. you get the rocket for later on. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they are created this software years ago, years ago, uh, and they even didn't change uh, the messages strings in this code because when all things starts, it sprints starting the flight software. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, but instead instead of flight software, it's a dish terminal software. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kind of wondering, like, is, is like they're just like you know a decade plus ago, they're like, uh, let's just make a platform and then we'll decide later. Well, I don't think they plan on space. making satellites or routers or modems, you know, when they started. They're 20 years old now, right? Well, I think this code is something about 10 years old. But SpaceX so itself, so I guess, yeah. Yeah, but but like just making a platform, it's just the idea that they're making a platform to save themselves time for 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 any number of like space like or space related stuff. It was founded March fourteenth, two thousand two. So yesterday, um, yeah, twenty years ago. Was, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I don't think they, and they, they would didn't have launch a rocket to celebrate that. No, no, that's when I'm they founded shocked. the company. <laughs> no, I understand that, but like, and they didn't launch a rocket to celebrate that. <laughs> oh, well, probably. And uh, okay, so well, I guess even the the saddle the start like satellites probably running the same code too. Uh, yes, yes, sure, the same code. <laughs> there are some differences, uh, plus yeah, maybe something special on the satellites that I don't have. But yeah, basically the same software. Have you, if I understood correctly, you also have a Tesla, right? Yeah. Have you tore that down to see if it also has the same <laughs> software? Sure. <laughs> sure, 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 of course. I did some hacks. Uh, uh, you, you know, my my Tesla was imported from the US. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. And it was equipped with a LT modem uh, that not yeah. work in Ukraine. So, yeah, I had to replace the modem. And I wrote an article about replacing the modem. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Uh, uh, sure, is it? yeah. Also, I got the route to my car. Uh, I also dumped the the firmware. I bought a computer unit, a separate board, mm-hmm. just to discover. I also have autopilot board from oh, the cool. Tesla. Yeah. So have have you have you changed anything? Yet? <laughs> like anything crucial? <laughs> Uh, I tried, but uh, I found that it's really easy to break up things. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's your car, too. <laughs> if you have spare yeah. ones, maybe. You might want to, yeah, you might want to have it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, back to the Starlink firmware, you were able to dump it. You you, ha- you discovered this co- common Linux uh, base. And did you look at kind of the actual application software at all? Is that easy to take a look at? Uh, sure, actually, there are a few processes that run from the Dishi. Uh, and basically, Dishi is a modem. It's a special modem. So there are just two, two processes, one for receiving and one for transmitting data. So, yeah, and uh, some process just to control all the things, uh, you know, connection flow, some management, and so on. It's quite simple system, but uh, yeah, uh, I told that it's well protected because uh, all the stages are signed. So you just can't replace the bootloader, you can, can't replace the kernel uh, and uh, all the data because everything is signed. So you can look at it, you just can't modify it. Yeah. Actually, the system starts from the initial bootloader that actually inside the CPU and couldn't be modified, or at least 
I don't know any methods to modify this bootloader. And this initial bootloader already starts to verify and signature of all stages. So yeah. That's really, I mean, that, that's good to know. I'm, I'm glad to hear it when things are well designed. Is is that like just, I mean, it's it's an ARM-based processor, isn't it? So is it just using traditional trust zone stuff in this case or? Uh, yes, it's trust zone. So, so you say it has like coprocessors for the for the modem part of it, right? Actually, it's everything is is inside one single chip. Oh, but yeah, like so, so it's a, it's a it's an antenna array. So, so you must have like a zillion RF inputs to some yeah. some sort of front end. Mm -hmm. Sure, the uh, amplifiers for transmission and receiving plus. Uh, Beamformers, it's a chip that creates a phase shift on each element uh, just to form the beam mm -hmm. of the receiving and transmitting data. And uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound so simple. <laughs> yeah, amplifiers, uh, beamformers, beam and uh, the main CPU. So with modem and uh, application CPU. That's that's really you cool. You know, o, you know, Oleg's working on baby's first <laughs> first antenna book. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, no. I, I, as a non RF person, all of this sounds like incredibly complex. But but I guess th this is probably a face I yeah, I'm a one horrible one. RF person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's complex. But uh, yeah, from the whole perspective, it's uh, it's a well integrated system. So yeah, the CPU is a custom uh, chip. Uh, you. It's impossible to find any documentation oh. for this chip. Yeah. So at this point, then, how do you know how many processors there are inside of this chip? Are you just kind of guessing how many there are? Device trees? Yeah. <laughs> Device tree? <laughs> yeah. Uh, plus, I got some boot locks. Uh, yeah, with uh, locks, it's a very interesting situation because uh, you can get only the part, only part of the lock. Uh, because uh, when the kernel starts to initialize the hardware, the server console is just disabled. So I guess on the other end, so you know you can you've been able to determine what's going on in the system and so forth. But have you figured gotten far enough along that you've been able to figure out like how the signals are getting modulated and demodulated and 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 what the data format looks like at this point, or is that still kind of an unknown? At the moment? I have some ideas, uh, but uh, then uh, my lord just interrupted uh, with a war. <laughs> 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 a minor thing. Darn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, sure, there are a lot of things to research, uh, to look around. So, yeah, I will continue my work after all of this, I hope. Yeah, because yeah. you might need to use it, so you don't want to poke at it too much, right? Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm trying to get another one, Dishi. <laughs> you know, my Dishi is uh, one of the first revision. It's mm -hmm. around, and uh, now I'm trying to get Square on Dishi. Is it still possible to ship things right now to, to Kiev? Yeah. Mm, no, it's not possible. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a backup address. Uh, yeah, I have some address on the west of the country, so the dish should be delivered to this address, and then I will find some way maybe to get it to deliver. Yeah, to get it. Okay. This, with all due respect to everything that's going on there, it, either this would be a fantastic movie, or getting the, the really the new dish. or really dumb. <laughs> Or both. I'm not really sure. I mean, just the, the <laughs> logistics, like having another address and then somehow arranging transport between cities in a literal war zone is pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, you know, actually, when I read in the news, sometimes it looks like uh, some strange movie sometimes. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah, except yeah. you're in it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that I saw <laughs> on your blog uh, in regards to Dishi is now that it, it's it's a square design. Like I couldn't quite tell from the pictures that you had. Oh no, that, like, that's the kind of that's shape. the terminal. Oh, the the router. I think you're looking at not the dish. Oh, is that the router? No, I thought uh, uh, this one. Is it really round? Well, no, no, no. Yeah. No, so, so you're no. showing now, us that looks like an obelisk from the future <laughs> that, that, slash that's router. A router. <laughs> 
no, no. That that looks that to me that looks like finally. Do, do any of you remember the streaming box boxy? It's kind of like a, a classier version of boxy. No, I don't. I, uh, you haven't. Have you blogged about the 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 sheet or just mostly Twitter posts, right? Uh, mostly Twitter. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm preparing I'm preparing a big article about the dishi because there are a lot of all the all the a lot of information I collected. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one too. But yeah, the, the just yeah. the just the router one is very thorough and, and detailed. I, I yes. really really appreciate it. Yeah, actually, you know, with uh, new Dishi Square terminals, uh, they used a new router design uh, with a really bad design solution. Oh. Uh, yeah, there are no Ethernet port on this new router. Oh, it's only uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's only Wi-Fi. Uh, so with the first uh, version of the terminal, you have a Dishi, you have a router, and you have a PoE box. Yeah. That uh, power is the same car. And they used, used standard Ethernet connectors for everything. And now they moved everything inside the router box. So, and also they used some uh, proprietary connectors. Oh. For all that's of a this. Shame. Yeah. So now if you want to get Ethernet, you should buy a special, a special Ethernet adapter. Like a Wi Fi Ethernet or, or, or just like a weird cable? Actually, actually, I already have article about this adapter. Oh, that's I what already, this is. Yeah, the latest mm-hmm. article on my website. That's the one from March 7th? Is yeah. It? Something like that? Yeah, yeah, it's quite recent. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, basically, basically, this box uh, sits between the DC and the router. So, it's not much in there, but uh, yeah. And uh, I have an idea when I will get my new dishi, I will find a way to bring back the in, uh, the Ethernet port to the router. Oh, that's... So, yeah, I know it's possible. I know it's possible. So, yeah, I just need a board of this router to do this. That's cool. <laughs> is there a Starlink uh, reversing community anywhere, or is it has it mostly been just you uh, on your own? It's me on my own. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have uh, some contacts in Twitter on Twitter where people also trying to do something. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, but but there's no like a some server forum whatever where where a lot of people no, are. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious. Has this been launched as a service? Because I I've never. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, is, I was nodding my is head. It, is it? Yeah, yes. I, <laughs> even I didn't know that. But like, is it expensive? Because I've had I had like satellite dsl like way back in like 2000 but it's like 100 bucks a month is it or uh yes uh, but it's free in ukraine for three months yeah it's special offer for spacex (laughs) limited (laughs) time (laughs) yeah yeah three months free (laughs) that's so kind does it come with a ipod submarine or (laughs) <laughs> that would be great <laughs> yeah but that is pretty nice that they were well because it, it, you weren't you weren't able to use it before just because it was disabled in the country right uh, until recently yeah sure uh, you know this uh, girl fencing is just uh, a matter of software configuration of the satellites there is no difference in hardware for different uh, different regions yeah, they probably just oh, if we're over a country that's not turned on, we just won't talk to them, right? Basically. Yeah, yeah. When uh, Dishi is trying to find satellites, uh, Dishi is uh, looking for the signals, and when the Dishi is getting something, Dishi is trying to establish connection with satellite, but satellite uh, is able to refuse this connection attempt. Okay. And do you know? Do you know how it? It, when it switches between satellites, you know, as, as they fly over, do you lose connectivity pretty uh, obviously, or does it hop over pretty quick? It's quick, pretty quick. It's it depends on your environment. Yeah, of Is course. there any ab- abstractions? If there are no abstractions, then you, yeah, didn't notice it. That's pretty. I'm cool. kind of wondering how it handles it, like whether it whether the satellites are kind of keeping track of sessions between users and then the. the the transition seamless versus having to reestablish it each time. And it just is really fast at setting up, tearing down and setting it up. Do you know that yet? I have no idea. 
I mean, I'm just spitballing here. I, I also <laughs> have no idea. That, that's, that's why I'm trying to yeah. to, to figure it out. Issue. Yeah, to figure yeah. out. Yeah, to see yeah, how it works. It'd be kind of curious to see like what their strategy is, whether they prioritize uptime or kind of like tidiness of connections or whatever. And it's pretty fast, right? I, I was reading. Yeah. Yeah, I was amazed because uh, you know my DC was disassembled. It just uh, lying outside my window without any motors, uh, with a lot of abstractions. But yeah, I got uh, two hundred megabytes per second, and the, and and uh, yeah, and even more. Yeah, that, that's faster than my internet in my last apartment in Silicon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's faster than my uh, home internet. <laughs> right now yeah yeah that's that's incredible yeah yeah the, the whole technology is, is bananas and then they're launching them like they were free you know just constantly startling 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 launches yeah starting uh, starship yeah it's like uh we are living in the future in some yeah science fiction movie absolutely yeah yeah for for, for some uh for work projects we use uh, iridium and it's mm -hmm. not fast <laughs> yeah. and, and it's very expensive as well so seeing some yeah. of these other constellations go yes. up. Yes. Yes. Speaking of your Iridium, you also could get the data from the Iridium satellites with your SDR receiver. Yeah. And so uh, so we did interview uh, Schneider um, a few years ago. Uh, I don't know if, if you've seen his work, but they they did a whole reverse engineering of the Iridium signal. Uh, yeah. So, so that's a fun episode. We'll link in the show notes for, for folks that haven't heard it. Yeah, it's, it's terrifying and, and really cool at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I read the the book, uh, it's called Eccentric Orbits, which is the whole history of the Iridium satellite network. And just, the, the it, it reads like a spy thriller. It's crazy. So, okay. So do we have any more questions on Starlink? I think we covered oh, all we the Starlink this. stuff. Yeah. And because I think we covered, so it looks like we have one last question which we ask everybody, what's your favorite, most valuable tool? Just imagine yourself on a desert <laughs> island or maybe in your current situation. Yeah, what, wanna, what are like... some of your favorite tools? <laughs> yeah, what are your favorite tools? Mm, I don't know. Maybe it's my brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, the best point. We keep getting, I think, I feel, yes. <laughs> Reliable, <laughs> always with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. I, I, yeah, actually, I'm using plenty of tools uh, like soldering station and different computers, uh, logic analyzers, uh, oscilloscopes, uh, and so on. Uh, yeah, my, for reverse engineering, maybe it's a uh, logic analyzer. What, what, what do, do you, you use? A particular one? Yeah. Uh, Sailor Logic. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Although yeah. I did break mine recently. <laughs> mine still works. <laughs> yeah, they are great guys. I found that uh, they are very responsive. Uh, oh, they're so, they're awesome. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, Mark Mark yeah. and Joe are, are super friendly, uh, super helpful. They're yeah, they're they're the best, and their and their software is great. Yeah, I agree. I was going to ask. Okay, are you guys using the new interface or the old interface? The two point yeah. Uh, new. Yeah, I'm using 2.0. Yeah. I hate. I hate it. <laughs> unless, uh, unless you need a specific decoder, I, I love the new interface. It's faster. Uh, you can do real time. It's mm -hmm. still constantly yeah. getting updated. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't have a lot of RAM on your computer, then don't use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> but but then you also won't be able to do long captures. So I feel like yeah, it's, uh... yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, speaking of computers. Uh... Uh, in my hacker super cluster, I had to build a special computer oh. <laughs> just for this super cluster. <laughs> yeah. I am not surprised. Oh, was this because you needed a lot of PCI interfaces, or, or what was the? Uh, yeah, yeah. I need a lot of uh, PCI interfaces just for USB buses. Uh, Is that why bus. you wrote that article about the PCI PCI Express driver? interface or was that before i don't know uh, it was it was before it was before okay. yeah but but i guess for folks who don't know you can't just plug in 10 things to usb hub because it, it, it all gets shared with a single bus um, yeah what? 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we, we, you will get only chunks of the data at the same time. So yeah, actually, I have an article about my supercluster, and there's a great explanation of why I need the new computer for this. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, for for soft for software reverse engineering tools, are, are you an IDA user? Do you use Ghidra, or do you do a lot of decompilation, or do you use different tools uh, to to look at uh, IDA? IDA? Okay. IDA, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that seems to be the kind of industry standard. Some folks are switching to Ghidra, but I, I feel like everyone who's used IDA in the past just uh, keeps I, using I it. Try, I tried Ghidra, but it's uh, strange. <laughs> it's different, yeah. It's yeah. Op opposite. <laughs> There's this thing called undo, and I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> cool. Um, oh, I, I, can't, I can't thank you enough for, for, for joining yeah. us. Like, this has been so much fun. Um, or do you have any last words for for listeners? Uh, no, because right now I, I hear I hear sirens, so yeah, I need to hide. Oh, wow. to oh well, we should let you go. <laughs> we will let you go. Yeah. thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for so inviting much. me. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 So. No, no worries. <laughs> I should go. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. Bye. So, Oleg had to go because of a air raid siren. So we're going to have to close out the show uh, w without him. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, a little awkward. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we, we, uh, we're going to have show notes with links to all of the things. Uh, you can find Oleg on Twitter at Oleg Kutkov and Oleg Kutkov .me .me. Um mm -hmm. We'll have links to all of these things. Yep. Uh, you can find me, Alvaro, at Alvaro Prieto on Twitter or at alvaroP.com. You can find me, Jen, at RebelBot Jen. Also, I own RebelBot at Re RebelBot's Twitter. I do not sell NFTs. Yes. Uh, we shouted out all of our Patreons last show. Woo, so, yeah, we'll give you a break. Episode. Yeah, we'll give you we'll <laughs> me a break. <laughs> give you a break. No, the, the audience. Out. Yeah, we'll give you the audience a break. <laughs> um, if you have comments, suggestions for the show, guests for the show, show names, you want to tell us, I don't know, secrets, who knows? Find us on Twitter at unnamed underscore show or hit us up on the comment form, which we will probably only see once or twice a year. If you still can't find us, I don't know how that's possible. You can go to unnamedre.com. All right. Oh, one last thing. And then we're always looking for reviews on podcasts. Go to your favorite podcast app or however you listen to us. That's right. Put in a review. We really appreciate it. Okay. And uh, join our Patreon. Uh, we can't mention how much, how thankful we are to our current Patreons. And then you get to hang out in our Discord and talk to people, past guests, other Patreons, and, and us. <laughs> okay. See you later. See you guys. Bye.